wie ein Hund. Guys, this is the only time I'll ever be able to say it, okay? It's literally the only time that I'll be able to say it. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, show you the game. I uh, had the white pieces. He was rated like 1800. He was from the US. Now, I went for 1d4, guys. 1d4, woohoo! And trying new things, yes! d4, he went knight f6. I went c4. He went, I believe, g6, yeah. I thought he might go for a king's Indian, but knight c3, he ended up going for a Grunfeld over here, um, which uh, I'm pretty sure he prepared. You guys are gonna see, but I'm pretty sure he prepared this because I've said like a lot of times that I hate playing against the Grunfeld and I also always play the same thing against the Grunfeld. Yeah, he also played this super quickly. Like the opening, he was just blitzing it out. He ended like the opening with like one hour 33, which is like three minutes more than what he started with. So I took knight takes. This is just a normal Grunfeld, e4, takes, takes. This is, you know, all very common. Uh, he needs to take here. You can't really move back because then you just lose the tempo. And I'm just basically trying to take as much space as possible. And then he went bishop g7 and the idea with the group file is basically that you're giving quite a lot of like center to white but at the same time like black gets quite a lot of like piece play black gets their pieces out pretty soon and they can always like counter the center with moves like c5 c5 is the most common way of countering the center and with this bishop over here um it can you know sometimes it can get a little bit tricky so so black is basically just trying to get his pieces out and trying to like attack the center um encounter the position that white has right now and i went for my queen a4 check now in the past i have also played bishop g5 like this is a move i have played but i hadn't really looked at this and to be honest i haven't looked at this for the past two years so i was like i'm not really comfortable playing this and i've been like playing like queen a4 check all the time in blitz like you know on stream so this felt like something i knew a bit more so that's why i decided to go for this even though i knew that he probably had prepared this against me Queen for check, then when knight bd7, you know after queen for check you can do a lot of things, you can go queen d7, bishop d7, uh, knight bd7, um, can do a lot of things, the idea actually of this check is just to kind of like put one of these pieces in an awkward position, because what black typically wants to do is that they want to go c5 and then like knight c6, um, and then they want to like put this bishop like on g4 or something, so like by kind of like forcing black to either go knight c6 now without c5 or knight bd7 which is a place where the knight doesn't really want to be or queen d7 which blocks the bishop or bishop d7 which is also not where it wants to be the bishop i'm kind of just forcing black to you know like put put a piece in a square they don't really want it to be in um at the same time as i'm developing my queen so that's the idea of queen a4 check so they went knight bd7 um i went knight f3 because i'm just trying to like put my pieces out um and um after that they castle this is all very normal they're just trying to develop oh and bishop g5 the idea of bishop g5 is just to uh basically pin this pawn over here on e7 if knight b6 at any point my plan is to go queen a3 that is what i want to do yeah so uh because the queen over here is pretty good because it's defending this pawn and it's also like maybe like defending this rook over here um, I believe, yeah, they went c5 over here, which is, like, very normal. That's what I said. Like, black is just trying to break the center, right? Boom, boom, boom. So c5 is a move that black al almost always does in the Grunfeld. Because, um, yeah, because otherwise my center is just too strong. And now, like, my king is not castle. My bishop is not developed. And here I played a move which I think I I'm not really sure about. I played all the time during Blitz, which is rook d1. But I'm not sure how I feel about it. Um, it turned out to be kind of bad during the... Or it didn't turn out to be bad, but my opening turned out to be bad uh, during the game. But anyways, um, yeah, queen a3 is actually here a pretty common move. And actually, I think queen a3 is the move that, like, my book... Because I have a book. Um, I think this is the move that they recommend. Rook d1, which is the move that I played, is fine. But the issue becomes knight f6, and that became a little bit tricky. I kind of like queen a3, to be honest. Yeah, so what I was saying was that rook d1 is, uh, was the move that I played. But yeah, I, I feel like maybe even rook c1 can be a good option over here. This is a pretty good place for the rook, because you're just opening up. Uh, or, you know, whenever they take here, the, the, the c file will be open. The idea of, of going rook d1 is just basically to have a little bit more of protection um, on this pawn and to maybe, if this knight moves, be able at some point to maybe take on c5 as there's a pin going on. But I, I actually think I shouldn't have gone rook d1, even though it's an okay move. But it created like a few weaknesses for me. Then there went knight f6, which is like a really annoying move because they're right now threatening this pawn. 
And if I go bishop d3 to defend it, which feels like a natural move to defend it, they have bishop g4, and they're pinning this knight, and I can't go knight e5 now because then my rook is hanging. So that's the issue with having the rook on d1, that my rook on d1 is sometimes like pretty badly placed. So I wasn't really that happy. You guys might wonder, you know, what happens over here after knight f6 if I go d takes c5, which was like kind of like the idea of going rook d1. But the issue is just that there's queen c7, and actually my pawn structure is just going to become really, really bad at this point. Um, if I go bishop e3, then there's just going to be knight g4, and then my, my you know, they're going to be exchanging their knight for my bishop, they're going to be taking this pawn, and my whole pawn structure is ruined. So even if I have a pawn up right now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be losing a pawn, most probably, and then my pawn structure is just going to be really, really bad. So I didn't like this at all for me. Um, anyways, so yeah, so I was out of prep over here. Uh, completely out of prep when I went d5. I mean, if I would have prep, like, if this was prep, I would never have gone d5, probably. Um, they went bishop d7, which is a good move. I had to go queen c2 to defend the pawn. And then they went for this move, queen a5, which I saw. It, it was just so sad, because I was seeing all these things, but I was like, you know, how can I stop this now? d5 was just a bad move, because I just got so much counterplay. They're threatening right now bishop a4. And I was here, like, really trying to, like, come up with, like, creative ways of, like, getting out of this mass and the reason why this is bad for me is just because they have so many threats and i'm like so far away like from development like my bishop needs to get out i need to castle um i decided this position to go for rook c1 because they were threatening bishop a4 which is pinning my queen and my rook now i was thinking about going rook d2 which seemed to be a bit more active but the issue with that is that after bishop a4 um I can only go queen d3 to not lose this pawn, because if I go queen b1, this pawn is hanging, right? Uh, and I need to defend this pawn still, but then there is c4. And I cannot take on c4, because there's rook c8, and they're going to be taking this pawn. So, um, that's why I opted for going for this move rook c1, but I realized the moment that I went rook c1, that, like, I'm admitting that I messed up. After that, um, they went b5, so... And in this position, um, I went bishop d3. I was actually pretty happy. And now they went e6. And I actually think that they went e6, um, like, a move too late. I think that they should have gone e6, like, in this position um, instead of b5, like I was saying before. Because now whenever they go e6, I'm going to have castles pretty soon. But because um, <clears throat> I've been able to put my bishop on d3. But if they would have gone e6 immediately then I would have, you know, been able to, um, then I wouldn't have been able to castle as soon. So I went e6, and I think actually uh, this isn't so scary for me anymore. Um, and I think it's, I went for bishop takes f6. I wanted to keep the center. And right now they are, uh, they're threatening my pawn, like with uh, several pieces. So um, I either had to take here or push, but I didn't really want to push because I was afraid of e5 because I thought that if knight takes, they might have rook e8. And you know, with e5, this is actually a pretty good move for black because it's stopping me from ever going e5 myself. Yes, I went for takes takes, and then I went e5 just to kick the bishop away. Bishop had to go back to g7, and I went d6. And the idea is just for me to get this pawn structure. I was afraid that at some point they might be able to break this pawn structure. And, you know, also, like, these pawns are pretty pretty strong. But um, I thought that this was the best that I could get, and I was just happy to uh, be able to keep my pawns over here. And actually, right now, like, this bishop isn't that strong. Like, even if bishop h6, I can just go, like, rook, D, rook b1 or something. So I wasn't really afraid of, of uh, my dark squares being weak, right? So here they went for bishop c6. Because they wanted to... I guess they wanted to take here uh, because this pawn is hanging. So they were trying to attack the one piece that was defending this pawn. And in this position, I think it's really important for me to sack the a2 pawn. The idea is that... If I go bishop e4 to exchange, my a2 pawn is hanging, but I think it was really important for me to do this move, bishop e4, because I think that if I do anything else, I'm just going to be so slow. Um, yeah, like if something like queen e2, bishop takes f3, pawn takes g3, I just think my pawn structure is completely horrible. They're going to go f6 at some point uh, and open up the f file. They might go bishop h6, you know, this pawn is hanging. There's b4, I, I don't know when I can castle well. I just think this is really horrible. So I think it was really important for me to sack this pawn on a2. So bishop e4, um, he took, took, and then he took on a2. I was actually pretty happy though when he took on a2 because I just felt like I was getting so many moves. Like my whole like issue was that my bishop had not developed and my king had not castled. But now all of a sudden both things had happened, you know? And I was like, wow. 
all my problems are solved but he went f6 and the moment he went f6 i just felt in my whole body it was like a it was like a little spark i felt a spark <laughs> in my body and i was like this has to be good for me <laughs> um yeah i don't know i just i just I just saw so many weaknesses in Black's position after this move. I think he wanted to activate his bishop as well. So the idea of f6 is probably, you know, typically actually f6 is like a relatively normal move against like a pawn on e5. But right now I don't feel like it makes that much sense because this pawn is going to become so weak on e6. And here actually, um, my first idea when he played f6 was that I wanted to go rook a1. Like this is the first thing that I was thinking. I was like, oh, I'm just going to go rook a1. But I didn't like rook a1 due to queen c4. Um, now, I'm not even sure if queen c4 is good. Like, this actually is probably pretty good for me. But for some reason, like, uh, sorry, rook a5, I think, is better. For some reason during the game, I, I didn't know if this was, like, so clear. Even though now that I'm looking at it, it does seem, like, really good for me. Because the pawns are all, like, really, uh, like, doubled and stuff. But honestly, the reason why I didn't play uh, rook a1 was because of that. I thought that queen d5 was a disaster. Like... Because I thought that there's just takes, takes, and then I just go e6. And my pawns are just so incredibly strong. Like, this is really hard to defend. Especially practically. I'm threatening e, uh, e7, d7, and just promoting. I did a move that stops the queen from defending this pawn. And also kind of locks the queen up a little bit over here on a2. And I was actually pretty happy with the move when I saw it. It just felt like it had to be a good move during the game. Um, and the move was c4. And it made a lot of sense to me because I thought that if takes, I have rook takes c4 and it's just going to be fantastic. Because um, this pawn is going to be so weak. I'm threatening rook a4 um, and all sorts of things. Actually, I thought he was going to go b4 or take, but he actually took over here. And when he took over here, okay, guys, my whole body, I mean, it was more than a spark. I mean, like, I was just looking at knight g5 and I was like, please, universe, like, this move has to work. Like... I need for my body and soul to be able to go knight g5. Like, this is just the move that I really want to do. Just please, like, let it work. It made a lot more sense to me to go knight g5 because there were so many threats over here. I was threatening on h7. I was threatening e6. And there were actually a lot of kind of uh, fun lines. So basically, I was looking at knight g5. And um, I came to the conclusion that it, you're basically not going to be able to defend this pawn. Because if you go something like um, rook a e8 then i was thinking d7 and then after uh rook e7 um apparently i can just go knight takes h7 and it's super winning with the same idea of if takes that there's queen check and i'm winning the rook there's a lot of tactics i honestly i thought that they were gonna go queen a6 i thought they would go for this but then i was just thinking that i have knight takes e6 and that i'm just gonna be an exchange up and i just thought that this was really good but you know guys what's really important i actually think that you know let's say that this would have been the position I don't think this would have been as clear if the pawn is on b4 if this pawn is on b4 i don't think this is as clear because the a pawn and the b pawn are very strong together even if i don't exchange up so it's crucial for me in this line to be winning that i have c takes b5 this is really crucial uh to me but they didn't go for that they went for bishop h6 and i think after bishop h6 it's important for me to go rook c2 just to uh basically not lose any tempo because right now they're thre they're pinning both my knight. Uh, they're pinning my knight. I can't move my knight. So, uh, but it's it's important that I have this rook c2 move. I'm I'm basically uh, unpinning my knight and threatening the queen at the same time. But they did a move that I wasn't expecting at all. They sacked their queen, guys. The anon sacked their queen against me. When will I be able to say that someone called the non sacked their queen against me? Probably never. No, but I actually wasn't expecting queen takes c2. I think they thought it was the best thing they had right now. Maybe it is one of the best things. Like, the engine is saying it's the second best move. So, it kind of, like, you know, it's not it's not worse than going queen a6 or whatever. But um, but I, I think it's not super complicated for me, to be honest. I just thought that these all the pawns, like, look, after takes and pawn takes on b5, just look at black's pawns. Look at this pawn, this pawn. There's literally one, two, three. There's literally four pawn islands. One, two, three, and four. And, you know, this pawn island is literally a double pawn. So it just felt like this just couldn't be uh, couldn't be that great. I don't know. It felt to me that this just... The pawns were just too weak, I felt like, over here. Um, after takes, they went rook c8. I think it's pretty important for me to go queen c4. Um, just to stop the pawn from pushing. I think this is important. 
Um, and I think they were kind of looking at, you know, trying to get anything going on with my king. But I think that everything is pretty far away. They went for bishop f6. They couldn't go king f7 because then I have rook a1, which is the idea of queen c4 as well. There's rook a1 over here, and, you know, if they go for rook a8, then uh, I'm probably not going to be taking here because I don't want to open up any files. Then I actually think that I would just go for something like h4 to get some, you know, air for my king. And after something like bishop h6 or something, then maybe I could take here. Because then, yeah, I don't know. Because then there's uh, then there's no back rank. I went rook a1 just because I wanted to attack the pawn. I thought they might go for something like e4 just to, like, make things, I don't know, spice things up a little bit. I was going to go then queen takes e6 and then take on, a, on um, a7. But I was afraid that there would be something like this. Which now I'm reali realizing that there isn't, but for some reason during the game this seemed a little bit scary. After rook a1, they just they just went back to a8, um, and then I just took on e6, rook f7 just to block, and then I just went queen d5. And the idea is just that um, the idea is that I'm threatening the rook, and whatever the rook goes, I'm gonna be going rook takes a7, and I'm pinning the rook. Yeah, so that was actually the last move. Queen d5 was the last move of the game. They were signed here. <clears throat> that was the game against uh, against Anand. That was how I beat uh, the Anand. <laughs>